So I'll continue with the line of best fit. In the 3.3 lecture, we, we just got done talking about that. Um, just starting to do lines of best fit. And then now we're adding in what's called the correlation coefficient. So we're giving you um, some different graphs, some plots, positive correlation, negative correlations, R of 1, R of negative 1. So your R value in a problem is what's called the correlation coefficient. If it's 1 or negative 1, those are the best. That means your data and your line of best fit are exactly matched. So what's probably happened is somebody has plotted some points and then, you know, it's just, or used the uh, line to get the points. It's exact fit. Positive high correlation. You can see the dots are fairly well grouped and aligned, but not straight line like this one. Negative, same thing. Have that negative slope to them, grouped. When you get to the low positive and the negative low, you're talking about the point threes and the negative point threes. Now it's starting to widen out. And if there's no correlation, they're just scattered across the graph. So positive correlation would be um, something like years of schooling versus your salary. Typically, as you increase your years of school, right, your salary will correspond. A negative correlation would be um, something like the size of a car and gas mileage. So as vehicles increase in size, their gas mileage starts to come down, right? Or the smaller car would have a higher gas mileage. Make sense? So negative correlation is just the relationship between the two variables. Negative implies that if one goes up, the other has to come down. Positive means that if one increases, the other one's going to increase also. Line of best fit. Oh, switch back to my pen. Line of best fit. Y hat. So we can let the calculator do some of the work for us. So we don't have to do it by hand like we did in 3.3. So what we're going to do is enter some of this information into our calculator. So if you have a calculator here today, grab it. All right, so we're going to go to the calculator. We're going to go into stat mode. Whenever you're working with lists, you want to start out by stat and edit. So you should have list one, list two, list three. So look at your calculator. If you do not have list one or list two, raise your hand. But if not, go up. Hit clear and come back down. Do not hit delete. It will delete the list from, from your calculator. Go up, hit clear, and come back down. Or you can clear lists in the stat menu. So for the first one, we're going to enter some years. Um, we have 10 results. Men's 100 butterfly. 1968 all the way to the year 2000. Depending on how you do this, some of you might actually type in the actual years. I'm going to use zero as 1968. So I'm just going to use zero. And then 1972 would be four, right? Are you with me? Yes? So you could do it this way. Zero, four, and then eight. 1980 would be 12 years. 
first. 1984, 16 years. What? It's just under four years. Yep. Yep. Um, for 20, 24, 28, and then 32 years will finally get me up to year 2000. Then in list two, we're going to enter the times. Make sure when you get done, you have 10 and 10 in your list. So it talks about finding a linear regression. So we went list, we went over, we'll do all that stuff. So to find a window, my X values were the years. I used 0 to 32. I'm not sure what you guys used. You might have followed the same thing. So I'm going to start with a negative 1, just slightly in back of it, so you can see the first dot out to 40, whatever, by 5, that doesn't matter. And then the Y minimums, those are the times, and it only goes from 55 down to 52. So you might start with a minimum of 40 seconds to a maximum of 60 seconds. So it really won't matter. So I have my window in there. Now I'm going to go to my stat plot. You could have done those in any order. I have to turn it on. And make sure yours says list one and two if that's where you put them. What's the? So at this point, we should be able to hit second graph. No, I don't want the graph. I just want graph, sorry. Don't hit table. So we see something like this. It's not a perfectly straight line. So how would you describe this data? A negative correlation. It's got a negative correlation because as the time is years, as the years increase, the times are decreasing. Um, and it's fairly a high correlation. Any swimmers in here? So as you look at the times, uh, depending on what pools you're swimming in, some pools are considered fast pools. Supposedly, I think it's like the deeper the water, the easier it is to swim on top of it or something. I don't know. And sometimes they create certain waves as the swimmers go, and they can catch different currents, whatever. Temperatures of the water, um, all kinds of things affect it. The swimsuits recently has been the swimsuits, the shark skins that they wear, that kind of stuff, that, you know, then they banned them from one of the Olympics, can't wear them anymore, can't wear the full body suit. So, got that? Now we're going to let the calculator find Y hat for us. So, once you have a graph, you're going back to stat, Slide over to calculate. You want number four, or you can do number eight. They're the same thing, linear. So you do linear regression, and you hit enter. So let's write a couple of these down. Um, so to remember that, negative 0.10658. Can somebody tell me what the negative point one zero six five eight? 
plus 55.3, something like that. So let's go back to our calculator. To get this R value, the correlation coefficient, you want to hit second, zero, which is, brings you to what's called the catalog, all the different functions in your calculator. You can start scrolling down until you get to the Ds, Enrique. So you can start scrolling down until you get to the Ds, or hit this X to the negative one, and it'll take you to the Ds. And you're looking for diagnostic on. So hit, put it on your screen, hit enter, and now your diagnostics are turned on. Now when you do stat, calculate, number four, your R value pops up for you. So my R value is 0.915. It's positive, which tells me as one of the numbers in the problem increases, the other one will increase as one decreases, right? Wait. Or no, it should have been negative, right? It's a negative. I didn't write down the negative. Sorry, negative. So as one increases, that's what we talked about. As the time dates increase, the years increase, the times are coming down. And it's really close to negative one. So it's a strong correlation. Use your solution or your equation to predict the time Michael Phelps uh, would have had at the 2004 Olympics. So, his time is negative 0 0.106. I probably don't need all these decimals, but we're going to do those. Now, what's 2004 for my problem? 36. From 1968 to 2004 is 36 years. You have to make sure you use 36, right? From 1968 to 2004 is 36 years. And then plus 55.38. So can somebody type that in? All Tell me what the answer is. Somebody that has their phone out, who's not supposed to, look up 2004, 100 Butterfly, Michael Phelps. Google it, see if we can find his time. I got 51.54. Yeah, Say it again. 51.54. Okay, so we found out that his actual time was, what, 50.58? And I think you might be correct, and that is approximately the time I believe they started wearing the crazy suit. Wait, no, it's 51.61. 51.61. Whatever, somewhere around there. Okay, so the prediction is not bad. 